I'm Nancy Levenger. I'm from Colorado State University and I'm here to tell you about. So, you have an interview. Now what? So, remember, you're not going to get a second chance. Your job application, the, the packet that you sent in to the, to the institution, got you the interview. The interview is the thing that's going to get you the job. When you, this is your opportunity to convince the people who are interviewing you that they should hire you. They want to know whether or not you're the person, whether you're qualified for this job, and whether you really fit into the department, whether you're going to expand the department in the direction that they want to see happen. It's also your opportunity to see whether or not this is a place that you would really like to go. If you're not interested in moving to the place where the job is offered, you really shouldn't have applied for the job, but you especially shouldn't interview for that job because you'll be precluding another person from getting that interview. So you have an interview and now you need to think about what you need to do before you go on that interview. Um, you passed all of the other hurdles and you're, uh, you have your plane ticket, you're ready to go. So before you go, you definitely want to do things like reviewing your itinerary. You need to know when you're what your travel arrangements are, and um, you should request a schedule before you leave so that you can make sure that you know um, what you're doing and who you're meeting with. That gives you an opportunity to figure out what kinds of things you could be talking to with these people who you'll be meeting. Um, make sure you review the directions. It's a terrible thing when you think that somebody is going to come and pick you up from the airport and they expected you to take a shuttle to the hotel uh, when you got there. Um, Make sure to watch the weather. It's terrible to uh, not be prepared and not have the right kind of uh, outer gear when you come outside and it is um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside and you have on uh, a lightweight windbreaker. It's not going to really cut it uh, in terms of keeping you warm. And don't be late. Allow for delays. So if you have a choice of when you're um, scheduling your travel, Give yourself a little bit of extra time because then you have the opportunity to be able to relax a little bit once you get to, to the place that you're going, or it gives you a chance in case something got delayed about to travel. Okay, do your homework. Find out about the department, and you might even want to find out about the institution, especially at a small college, or uh, because you want to know what's going on there and you want to be able to sound knowledgeable because when you sound knowledgeable about what you about the place that you're going to visit then that indicates your interest in being at that place and review all of that material before you go on the interview and okay it might be hard but get a good night's sleep actually it's best to get a good night's sleep not the night before the interview but the night before the night before they actually show that the that's the important night for, for a good night's sleep. When you first meet people, your introduction set the tone. So make eye contact, look at people in the eye, have a firm handshake, none of these limp, uh, squishy hand shakes. You want to be enthusiastic, but no cheerleaders, right? Um, that, that, that's overdoing it. Um, show respect. Um, there may be people who are really shy, and so you're going to be the one who has to break the ice there. And absolutely always tell the truth. It is never worth telling something that is untrue when you are um, in this kind of situation. You will be found out, and you won't get a job. Okay, presenting your work. Um, this is your opportunity to show them what an accomplished scientist you are. So you want to make the best of it and really show the, the, how interesting and exciting this is. Gear your presentation to your audience. Know how much time you have and prepare that, uh, prepare extra material in case you have, um, in case you talk too fast. You tend to talk faster when you're in a, when you're in a nervous situation. So you definitely want to prepare some extra material for this. This actually happened to me when I interviewed for the job that I have now. Um, make your pre presentation interesting. A boring seminar is not going to get you a job. So um, think about things that can be analogies that will pull people in instead, instead of the really fine technical details that you have. Know your material in, inside and out. 
There may be questions that you can't answer, but you probably do know the answers to most of the things if you prepare um, in terms of what your material is. And most important, again, practice before you get in there. Practice in front of your advisor, practice in front of your research group, practice in front of people who are really different from who you are so that you can get feedback about what works and what doesn't work in your presentation. Okay, so now you're at your interview. You really want to remember the things that your mother would tell you. And since I'm a mom, I can tell them to you. So you really want to wear appropriate clothing um, uh, a neat and well-groomed hairstyle is uh, a good thing to do. You don't want your hair to be distracting to you. Um, if you tend to get uh, hot when your hair is down, you probably don't want to be going around the whole day like holding your hair up like this. Um, you really want to minimize cologne or perfume. Um, many people uh, really don't like the smell of a lot of a, of a strong aftershave, and uh, sometimes people are actually allergic to it. To it so really minimize that mineral jewelry nothing really gaudy nothing that's going to get in the way of, of things they might have you wear a, a microphone when you give a talk and if you have a clanky necklace in front that can cause a lot of problems with people being able to hear you be sure you are comfortable this is i can't uh, stress this enough um when i was um on the oral exam committee for a young woman, I can still remember how she tugged at her brassiere the entire time through the talk. And the entire committee got so distracted by the fact that she was uncomfortable. You really don't want shoes that are so um, high up that you might turn your ankle. And by the same token, you don't want to have something that is um, uh, just an uncomfortable feeling shoe because you're going to be distracted by it the whole time that you're out there. Make sure you have good personal hygiene. I know this sounds like a no-brainer, but take a shower. Make sure that the clothes that you bring along on your trip are, not, are laundered so that they are not so. Your appearance um, makes the first impression, and now is not the time to be anti-establishment. I mean, obviously things are changing these days, but there are still old farts like me out there who don't appreciate some of the, the new attitude here. If you're a guy, you probably want to wear a, uh, a jacket and a tie, but if a tie makes you feel really uncomfortable, you feel like you're choking all the time, then don't wear a tie because you're not going to be comfortable and you will be distracted by the fact that you have this thing on that you're not used to wearing. Um, get your shirts professionally cleaned. This is a really cool thing. If you get them professionally cleaned, they put them in like a little packet and they stay really nicely pressed while you travel with them. Polish and shine your shoes. People notice these kinds of things. And your shop socks should match your clothes. We had an interviewee um, many years ago at, at Colorado State. He had a beautiful tweed jacket, a lovely shirt, tie, slacks, penny loafers, and brilliant purple socks. It was so distracting for the audience. All anybody could look at was his socks while he was talking. Trim your facial hair, no easy top beards, um, and minimize your jewelry. Um, if you have big gauged ear, uh, ear lows, put in something that is relatively innocuous. For women, you want to be conservative but not dowdy. You don't want to wear something that is um, uncomfortable again. Pants are okay, but they should be professional, not jeans. Um, your skirt length, um, neither too, too short, no, no mini minis, and, but no floor length dresses either there. Um, something that is in between is fine. Again, minimize your jewelry, especially avoid things that are jangly and dangling, not dun, 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 numerous bracelets that are gonna make a lot of noise. And your hair should be really easily managed and shouldn't distract you. That's the most important thing. If you're comfortable having your hair down, then leave it down. But if that distracts you, then put it up in the way that you're used to having it. And minimal, tasteful makeup. Um, really, no Dolly Parton's here. 
Most of all, wear comfortable shoes. Women have a tendency to think that they have to wear shoes that they're not used to wearing and they're not used to walking in. And you may end up walking a lot while you're on your interview because you're going from uh, office to office, but sometimes from building to building, and sometimes you're going out to, and you're walking to lunch and you're walking back. So make sure that what you're wearing on your feet is comfortable. Again, what your mother would tell you, right? Meals are part of the interview. They use your company manners, right? Um, no elbows on the table, don't slouch, so sit nice and comfortably, and don't talk with your mouth full, don't spray your food everywhere. Napkins are for your lap, or for your mouth, use yours. Don't leave it on the, ta on the table there. If you don't know which fork to use, watch what other people are doing and do the same thing that they are doing. Avoid messy foods, no barbecue here. And really do avoid alcohol. One drink is probably fine, but you really don't want to get drunk while you're on your interview. That sends a, a really long, uh, uh, strong um, message there. And probably not a drink at lunch because you still have a good bit of your interview to go. And do not attempt to pay the bill. When we interview you, we're picking up the tab. I can't say enough about personal hygiene. Hygiene. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you um, are that you bathe and that you wear deodorant. Brush and floss your teeth. If you have a problem with halitosis or you just feel like you need something like this, you might want to carry along some breath mints. Maybe you had onions in your sandwich at lunch, and then you can feel that oniony breath there. It'll help if you have some mints with you, and make sure your clothes are clean, fresh and clean. Um, be prepared, pack extra stuff, extra socks, extra underwear, stockings for women, you never know when you're gonna get a run in there. Pack an umbrella if there's even the, the remote chance of rain and make sure that you have a coat that's suitable for the um, area that you're going to visit. After you go on the interview, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, tie up all the loose ends. Make sure that you submit your expenses promptly so that they can take care of them. And um, also, you really want to send thank you letters. I love to receive emails from people who have interviewed in my department, especially when they say something um, particular back to me that indicates that they remember who I am and what they talked to me about. This is also your opportunity to be able to tell people about something. So perhaps something came up in your either your um, research talk about the research you have done or the research that you're proposing that you couldn't answer when you were there. This is your opportunity to be able to clarify that kind of a question with somebody who is at that institution. So you definitely want to send an email to your host. You should send one to the department chair. But you also should talk, send things to people who maybe are really interested in what, you, what you're doing there. This is, like I said, opportunity to clarify the points. And this is also a time when you could find out about the timing for the decision. You could ask a question like, when can I expect to hear back from you? What's your timeline like? Or you could have asked about that while you were still on the interview. So remember, the application gets you the interview the interview can get you the job. Even the strongest packages can be destroyed by a weak interview. And I've seen that time and time again where you get somebody who on paper looks amazing and they come and for whatever reason, their interview does not net them the job. They, they appear arrogant and aloof. They don't connect well with the other faculty members. They don't speak broadly enough about the research that they're doing or they simply are not able to connect with the faculty in the department. Remember, everybody has a chance, and this is your chance to maximize yours. Good luck.